All right, on this video, we're going to um, we're still going to use the guidelines for simplifying the trig expressions. Um, we're going to go over three problems, and what we're really going to kind of highlight and kind of focus on in this one is this last one. If nothing works, then you can take any trig function and put it in terms of sine and cosine. A lot of times when you do that, you can get some trig expressions to cancel out, or you can get some Pythagorean identities. All right, so I'm going to do, I think the last video we did, we did number one. I'm going to do number two right now. Okay, so if I move this over, if I look at two, and if I go through the guidelines, there's no GCF. I have three different trig functions, right? I have cosecant, a cosine, and cotangent. So I can't pull out a greatest common trig function. There's no Pythagorean identities because nothing's squared. And the other one is if you have fractions, find the LCD. I don't have fractions. So this is the only thing I can do. I'm going to put it in terms of sine and cosine. So let's center this. Let's just do number two right now. All right, let's see here. Cosecant, that is 1 over sine of x. Cosine, I just leave that the same. And cotangent is cosine over sine of x. So let's see, if I multiply this right here, it's going to give me cosine squared of x. That's x. Cosine squared of x over sine of x. So we have 1 over sine of x minus cosine squared of x over sine of x. Now the good thing about doing this one and putting it in terms of sine and cosine, I have the same denominator, sine. So I don't have to find a common denominator, I already have it. So I can combine this into one fraction. I'm going to combine the numerator as just 1 minus cosine squared of x over that common denominator of sine of x. Now this is what should stand out. When you do that, that is Pythagorean identity. That equals sine squared of x. So you have sine squared of x over sine of x. So one sign is going to cancel out top and bottom, so it just equals sine of x. And that's our answer. Okay, so that was number two. Uh, let's see which, which other ones. Uh, let's do number three real quick. Okay, number three. This is going to be another one. Again, nothing's going to work. You can't pull out. We have three different trig functions, cosine, cotangent, and sine. You're not even adding or subtracting, so you can't pull out a common trig function. Um, there's no Pythagorean identities. You only have this sine squared, but there's no cosine squared or plus one. Um, you're not adding or subtracting fractions, so there's no LCD. The only thing you can do is put everything in terms of sine and cosine. Well, the only thing I have to change is this cotangent. Sine squared and cosine will leave the same. So you're going to have sine squared of B. This cotangent right here that changes to, what is it, cosine of b over sine of b. And then this is all over this cosine right here. Now it gets a little messy with the fractions, but let's just focus on the top. If I focus on this top right here, well, I can see this sign I can cross cancel with one of these signs, so I can kind of get rid of this sine squared. So that numerator, you're just left with sine of b, cosine of b, and this is over this right here, this cosine of b. So then these cosines cancel and you're just left with sine of b. Alright, let's, uh, let's do one more. Uh, let's do number five. Okay, number five, again, you'll see the same thing. You can't pull out a common trig function. I have three different trig functions, sine, cotangent, and cosine. Nothing squared, so there's no Pythagorean identities, and you don't have fractions. So the only thing you can do is put it in terms of sine and cosine. So this sine of A stays the same. This cotangent is cosine of A over the sine of A. And this cosine stays the same. This is just times cosine of A. Uh, this is very similar to the, uh, I guess, the first one we did. So this, you still have sine of A. When you multiply this, the cosines up top become cosine squared of A over the sine of A. But the one thing about this, there's no these common denominator. There's no common denominator. So this is going to be sine of A is going to be the common denominator. So when I do that, 
I have to multiply this fraction by sine of a and the bottom by sine of a. So that becomes sine squared of a plus cosine squared of a and this is all over the common denominator of sine of a. And there, lo and behold, you see a lot of times when you do the LCD in the top you get a Pythagorean identity sine squared plus cosine squared, well that's 1 and then if you have 1 over sine of a don't be left with a trig function in the bottom. If you move the sine of a to the top, it's, that's its reciprocal identity of cosecant of a. Okay, so these three problems that we did, nothing worked. Absolutely nothing worked, so we resorted to taking every trig function and putting it in terms of sine and cosine. By doing that, then you can use some of the other guidelines on the list.